Welcome back to the video for data entry into SPSS. Uh, now part two. So far we've entered the names and the nicknames of all the variables and the variable names. I've added the description a little bit further. And this is still my questionnaire. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to fill out the missing values. The missing value is what will I type in if somebody skipped the question or incorrectly answered the question or unreadably answered the question. So I like to use one value uh, that's the same for all of them. So I normally pick a high number. I normally use just a simple discrete missing value. So 999. You can pick any number you like. Uh, you could even say, well, I'm going to use one specifically for incorrectly answered or unreadable answered or something else. Uh, or even a range if you know that the age, for example, cannot be above 150 for some reason. I click on OK. And then I'll say copy and then paste. Another thing I want to do is I want to assign the values. Uh, some people do this. Uh, I normally don't, but for this video, why not? I assign the value 999, which was the missing value, and actually say incorrect or uh, skipped. You don't have to do this. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. It can easily be done. Copy and paste. And another thing is that I'm not using any decimals, so I'll set that to zero. And then again, copy and paste. That way, most of my variables don't have any decimals, uh, none of them actually. Uh, the missing value is set for all of them, so that's okay. For the ones that are not open questions, I need to enter the possible options. So for gender, let me move this one a little bit further to the left so I can actually keep them side by side so for gender I had male and female I like to use numbers so one and then the order they appear on the survey and two is female okay the game of thrown ones that's a no yes or yes no and then it's quite convention to use actually zero for no and one for yes okay and I can simply copy paste this again to all of them with the brands I'll use again one for Nike two for Adidas three for Puma and there's a fourth option which is other okay. then here this actually stays and then this is again uh, no yes so instead of typing it all in again I'll simply copy paste this one doesn't have so I can actually remove these and then enjoy I have one for strongly disagree two for disagree I use three for agree and four for strongly agree Noticed I made a small mistake here. This should be with a capital. Doesn't have to be, but change. Okay. Now the next thing is the type. I like to be typing in numbers most of the time, except for the name. The name is going to be a string because it's going to be text, and you simply have to guess how many characters people might need. So for example, my name is Peter, so that would be P-E-T-E-R, that's five characters. But they're longer names, so if I set it to 30, hopefully most names will fit in. It does warn me that now my missing values will disappear, that's okay. 
and the same goes for this specified that's going to be a string I'll use 30 again okay and this one as well that's a string and 30 as well now the last thing to do is set up my measurement levels I'll put this back I think it was here or actually one further down here it doesn't really matter where it is but the measurement level what is your age that's a number so that's scale my name is indeed nominal my gender or my gender or gender in general is nominal there's no fixed order and copy paste because all of these are actually nominal and the same goes for these now here there is a logical order in the answer options so that's going to be ordinal copy and paste and I think that's basically it um, I skipped over a few options the width as mentioned that's for the number of characters um, for numeric values it doesn't really have any influence so I'll normally leave it at 8 columns is how wide the column will actually be so if I go for example to data view and I change the width for the H column you'll notice that it has changed in the variable view as well so normally leave it at 8 and then go to the data view and change it manually here and align is where the data will actually be entered so that's it for the entering the questionnaire into SPSS hope it became more clear